Are we, are we right? Okay. okay. Are you going to um, edit um, this? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. All right. So if you don't say something perfectly, you can say it again. Okay. In other words, if you want. Yeah, sorry. You uh, yeah, it? put it up and then I'll. All done. Okay. It's 100% um, lease up and it includes transitional housing for homeless families. Is this, was this part, is it on the, um, oh, I didn't know there was a Frank Chop place. That's yeah, good. so it used to be Chester Man. We named it Frank Chop. <laughs> we oh, named that's it. Great. <laughs> and you know, he was born in the building. Frank he was, was born, born in, in this building. building? He was used to be the old Naval Hospital, the Harrison Hospital. Oh, well then of course it's Frank Chop Place. That makes yeah. total sense then. Yeah. Well now, is Denny Park, did they, um, did the church, or is it on church property? Or yeah, it was on church owned property. Okay. In Park. Yeah. Okay. Because I know they, is Doug Lindsay still oh, that's the pastor over there or something? Oh, it's, um, um, it's, um. Some other guy? Yeah, it's, um, I think his name is. Your what? Yeah, it's a different name. Okay, okay, so it's not. <laughs> well, um, it's his name, I think, is Rick Devine. <laughs> okay, okay. No, it can't be Rick Devine. <laughs> Rick Levy. Pastor Levy. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, let me ask you uh, some questions. So so Lehigh is a big provider of, of uh, a whole bunch of housing. What do you guys specialize in? Well, we definitely specialize in transitional housing, but also permanent housing for homeless families and homeless individuals. And affordable rental housing in the in the continuum then you're not you're not necessarily in the shelter milieu as much well we have developed shelters so for instance we developed Noel house which is for homeless women for the um, Catholic community services so we will develop we have enough expertise to develop shelter transitional permanent housing across a broad spectrum um, but in terms of what we own, we primarily own transitional and permanent housing. And we're also, just so you know, in terms of the continuum, continuum we're developing um, home ownership housing as well. Excuse me, can I ask you, do you have some jewelry? Something's rattling. Oh, oh it's your hair. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, it's, it's, it's on the microphone? Is yeah. That, yeah. Oh, is that the right to put that back a little bit? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could hear it. You could hear it. Yeah. Oh, wow! Isn't that funny? Yeah. Kind of brushes up against the microphone. Not a problem that I have with my <laughs> oh. lack of hair. Um, okay, we'll, we'll start again. So okay. Would that be okay? Uh, to start again? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so once again, Lehigh's niche in the in the in the housing continuum is what? It's actually pretty much the whole spectrum. We own and manage transitional housing for homeless families and singles as well as permanent housing and affordable rental housing so we can, sorry because everyone we're, we're probably gonna have a problem in there oh yeah should we <laughs> uh, oh, is, yeah is it when you, um, I could get I could get my staff to keep keep people out of there for a while or just to keep it down hello Go on in. hi hi is there you know um Hey, Tad, you know what? I need your help because they're taping. And um, I think we need to keep this room really quiet. Okay. Do you want to? Not, we're not going gonna to tape for a really short period of yeah, time. Yeah, just okay. five, ten minutes. And would you? Yeah, Thanks. Yeah. We're doing this the third time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you set? We have seats. Okay. So the role of Lehigh in the continuum of, of low income housing is what? Well, we develop a range of affordable housing. We have over 20 sites where we provide transitional housing for homeless families, homeless individuals, and we provide permanent housing for homeless individuals, families, and the working poor. And we also, in terms of our continuum, we're doing affordable home ownership housing as well. In terms of transitional housing, what is the role of transitional housing? What's its purpose? Well, we think transitional housing is very, very important because it provides a opportunity up to two years for a homeless family or a homeless individual to receive supportive services. They may receive case management services, employment services, um, family services, and there's a um, sort of concentrated period of time where they can develop self-sufficiency skills and then transition into permanent housing. And, and, and what's the, uh, I guess the argument is that some people say you should just put them in permanent housing, you know, once they just leave a shelter. What's what's what would happen if you didn't have that per, that transitional housing niche? Well, you know, in the ideal world, 
we wouldn't have homelessness. And in the ideal world, there would be enough housing units so that we didn't have to sort of have this sort of bizarre continuum. But the reality is that right now there's a need for tent city, there's a need for shelters, there's a need for transitional housing, there's a need for permanent affordable housing. If we had our, you know, if we had our way and we could have as many units of permanent housing available, that's what we want. But that's not what we have. So um, it is very difficult right now to find enough permanent housing. And so transitional housing allows people to receive intensive services um, and it may be at um, a variety of different locations. It could be on-site, it could be off-site, and it provides an opportunity for us to then um, figure out a permanent housing solution. What if someone's not ready after, after two years, which is I think the outer limit, um, do they, if transitional housing has a, has a definite end point, mm -hmm. do you run the risk of, of, of people back on the street? Well, in some cases you run the risk, and this is al also having to do a lot with housing supply. Um, some people end up in one transitional housing program and if they can't find permanent housing, um, there's a way to extend their stay in transitional housing if, for, if there's a really good reason. Or let's say they're waiting for a Section 8 certificate or they're waiting for another unit to open up. In some cases, which is really you know, not what we want, um, people move to another transitional housing program. Um, the worst case is moving back on the street. What's the future for this continuum? Do you see transitional housing being a, a bigger slice uh, of, of, of the continuum going forward as we implement the plan and, and all the rest? Or will shelter be bigger? Will permanent housing be bigger? What's the goal? Well, I think we all know permanent housing is the answer. Affordable permanent housing is the answer. I think that um, ideally we need to maintain a certain like inventory of transitional housing. And also we need to expand tremendously permanent housing options. Um, there, as you know, um, people have been talking about transitioning in place so that you bring services to families and individuals in sort of like the, the services are transitional. So, the, so people receive services um, where they live and then they get to stay in their housing. Um, it has been like um, really, really difficult to find permanent affordable housing. And if um, the president keeps cutting the HUD budget and Congress does not restore full funding to Section 8 and other programs, we're gonna continue with this um, horrible shortage that is forcing us to have shelters and forcing tent cities to appear and forcing more and more people to sleep on the street. Is transition in place a model that, that, that makes sense going forward? It is, but the um, problem with transition in place means that um, if you accept families or individuals into transitional housing, they can stay and you have to have enough units um, so that you can have more families move in. So it means an ever increasing supply, which we agree. I mean, we agree that that's needed. Um, but I think um, um, I challenge the mayor, the city council, other public officials to come up with the funding, and that's what's needed. Um, I, f I think it's very easy to get cynical and sort of um, discouraged because we have wonderful, wonderful examples of housing that actually works in our community. We don't have to like, reinvent um, new models. We have great examples, and I think it's a, it's a um, shortage of resources. Can you see a scenario where shelter ends up being, in effect, transitional housing, so that you move people from shelter to permanent housing? Does that jump work? Well, you know, we actually um, have been successful at moving people from the street into permanent housing. And, of course, moving people from shelter to permanent housing works. It all works. Is, is transitional housing, uh, is families, what's, what's the kind of biggest user, at least of your transitional housing? Well, we have um, tried to specialize in um, families with children. And so we try to bring intensive case management services and a network of um, you know, health and um, educational resources, employment resources, mental health, um, family services, kids programs, um, and that's really, really critical. So we provide, in some cases, um, two, three, and four bedroom units for um, larger families with children. 
and that is really really hard to find in Seattle I mean I think finding you know it's like close to impossible to find a three or four bedroom unit that's affordable um, I think the uniqueness about transitional housing is that um, it it provides an opportunity for us to bring the services and um, the services are actually what's really really hard to fund and so to the extent that um, foundations and um, the private and public sector can see that um, investing in services, social services, supportive services, um, really brings around um, a transformation in the lives of people. And that's harder to do in permanent housing? Well, um, it's harder to do because in the past, um, transitional housing programs used to be funded sort of categorically. Um, if you have transitional housing, then it's understood that you would have services. Um, it took a long time for, um, I think, um, funders to understand that we need services throughout. I mean, you know, obviously people who are moving from, obviously people who are moving from the street into permanent housing, they also need services. Um, but for a long time, the programs were designed as two-year transitional. And therefore, um, we could only find funding for transitional programs. In your ideal world, that kind of restriction wouldn't exist. That's right. I mean, I think United Way needs to step, step up in a much bigger way than it has been. I think um, the state has been doing a, I think the State Housing Trust Fund and some of our, um, um, Mark Melosha, from, um, the representative from um, Federal Way, he's done an amazing job with the House Housing Committee trying to get resources to end homelessness. Um, he's been um, an incredible, incredible advocate. Um, State Representative Hans Dunchi, House Speaker Frank Chop. I mean, they've been like totally committed to this cause. When you say, uh, and there's a couple more questions here, when you say United Way needs to do more, meaning? Well, um, for some reason, um, I believe they have, um, they have like initiatives from time to time, like out of the rain. I think it's very small. I think it um, has um, little impact. Um, I think it, I think it's like almost like there's too much PR, but very little action. So I've been, you know, I've been critical. What about, and I assume it is a United Way project, or at least largely, the Committee to End Homelessness. Your thoughts on it, where we're at, and, and whether it can succeed? Uh, well, I think the biggest, I mean, obviously um, everyone spends like a long time, like years, defining the need. And there's like now a um, one night count and so I think we have a sense of the number, the vast numbers of homeless individuals and homeless families. And I think um, the major challenge would be the creative funding source to back up how are we going to systematically address and end homelessness. Um, do you do it on a um, you know, percentage basis? Do you set, well, over 10 years, what portion, what percentage of the homeless population are we going to actually house? And it's going to be sustainable? Is it going to be a long-term solution? I, I mean, I think it's great. I think there are like wonderful examples. Um, you know, um, one of the um, housing developments we just completed for the Cabrini Sisters is um, Cabrini First Hill Apartments, and it's 50 units of housing for homeless, homeless seniors and low-income seniors. And it's great because um, what's good about um, sort of a mixed model is that you can integrate homeless seniors with um, low-income seniors, and we do that in many of our developments. We integrate homeless families in with um, working families, and I think it's a it's a good mix. It's a permanent. That's a permanent. Yes. Apartment. Yes. Can we do it though? I mean, every the sense many people have is is that you keep building units, good units, quality units. They get full, but the problem still still exists. You just can never get ahead of it. I mean, is it? realistic and is it promising too much to say hey we're going to end homelessness in 10 years? Well I think um, you know obviously um, reprioritizing the city budget, re reprioritizing the federal budget, um, obviously we can end homelessness. I believe we can end homelessness. Um, you know I, I know you've heard this too much but obviously the political will is the um, the political will and the follow-up and the actual budget authority can make it happen. I mean it sounds like it will take 
a bigger commitment locally, statewide, federally. I mean, it's not gonna it's not gonna happen with with just the trend line as it as it's going funding wise. I mean, no. big things have to happen. No, in every in every budget action, every two year budget, every annual budget, every five year capital budget, um, bond bonding. Um, frankly, um, if the city council wanted, it could issue councilmanic bonds, general obligation bonds, and um, sort of um, um, make a big statement to end homelessness. And up to now, they just haven't. Well, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but you know, we're spending, we're spending all this money on the aquarium. We spent all this money on Benaroya Hall. We're going to spend more money on sports stadiums. We're going to spend more money on the key arena. I mean, there are big projects. The, you know, the um, sculpture park. Um, I think that um, if we can house fish, if we can house animals at the zoo, if we can build a new city hall, I think we should be able to end homelessness. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> what a great quote. What a great quote. That was wonderful. Thank you. Can you just get a little bit of wider shots? In case we use that, um, but thank you. That was that was great. Is that okay? Yeah, that was wonderful. I oh think you're God. right. I mean, the political. I'm like will slamming United Way here. <laughs> 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 no, oh, I hate I it. Uh, see, I hate it. They have like these bus ads. They have this bus ad showing um, a woman living in a box, and then the next one is a woman owning her home. <laughs> yeah. Right? They don't give us. United Way doesn't give us any money for the urban rest stop, doesn't give us really? any money to end, uh, United Way doesn't give us a dollar to end um, homelessness. Are they and we're the, lar we're the largest nonprofit, um, how one of, we're one of the largest nonprofits serving the poorest of the poor, and we have the largest number of transitional housing units. Year after year we applied United Way, we don't get any of their money on um, ending homelessness. That seems crazy. And then, oh, and they have the nerve, they have like a, a calendar. They issued a calendar, and they feature us in their calendar. Oh, really? <laughs> and, and, and then they don't give us any money. Is it, um, <laughs> uh, but, but they're the lead on this committee then. I mean, they're the lead on the Ending Homelessness Initiative. Is that, who's the lead? Well, it's the uh, Committee to End Homelessness. Okay. But Which they're kind of convening, or, or who? Well, I think Bill Block is okay. sort of the head of that. Okay. And is he and with Metro? Or, or well, he's sort of housed with King County. Okay. It's sort of like a temporary position. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's, you know how it is. Like, when I, you know, way back, like 20 years ago, we were working on committees. Remember with Tom right, Byers? Right, right, committees right, to end homelessness. Right, I mean, right. we've like always had right. a committee to end homelessness. <laughs> and it comes down to the money. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. people are chicken shit mm -hmm, on money, mm -hmm. right? I mean, look at how much money they're pouring into South Lake Union. Look right, at how much money right. they're pouring into, like, downtown, you know. Right, if we really mean redevelopment. It, as yeah. you say, some budget priorities are going to have to change yeah because it's not going to happen with just piecemealing it and i mean even the it. mayor's budget like they i mean after adopting the 10-year plan to end homelessness the mayor's budget last last november like no increase if mm. anything a cut remember mm -hmm. there were there with were the whole shelter yeah. issue yeah so yeah. Well, what does that say mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. is who's the best leader locally is steinbrook steinbrook okay and i think tom frankly has to step up Tom Rasmussen has to step up in a big way. He hasn't yet. No. What is is Lakata? Is this his issue? It could be. It I mean, could he's be. probably supported, but he's yeah. not the leader in the way in the way Steinberg is. That's right. But he could. He could. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, maybe we should do something there. Um, we've been we've been proposing. Um, Tom Rasmussen proposed a um, acquisition fund, land banking acquisition fund. Um, there used to be a growth fund. If there's downtown development, there ought to be some money set aside from the increased property tax, um, you know, for housing. Right. And um, we've been trying to get the mayor to like reinstitute the growth related housing fund, and that hasn't happened. I mean, it's just it's just like pathetic. Right. It's like right. no action. Right. 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 So there's a lot of lip service on this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's very discouraging. What about the county? Is Ron very good? Ron, to his credit, Larry Phillips and Ron did add money to the county budget. Mm -hmm. And that was really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They took excess funds and put it towards um, housing and ending homelessness. Th I mean, they did it. Right, right. You know? Right. Who, uh, who's getting the United Way money then? 
Oh, God, I don't know. I mean, I mean, the other providers like Plymouth and Chip or who, who's, well, what I don't are know. they I doing? I think it's too small and it's Obviously too. Obviously it's not a huge pot. But yeah, it's too, it's too small, it's too nominal. And, you know, I don't know. But they're doling it out to someone. Yeah. And just um, are you guys the biggest providers of transitional housing? You're probably right up there. Yeah, I think. We, well, I, I mean, think is the Y. Who else the, is the big no, player? We're larger than the Y. I mean, they're the other big player in that. Yeah. Yeah. In that game. Yeah, I think. Yeah, we're one of the largest regionally. Yeah, I think if you add up all the permanent housing units we have for homeless people and all the transitional, I think we're right up there. Because like, does Plymouth provide transitional housing? Um, I think they mostly do permanent, and they only do singles. So right. we do okay. seniors, families, singles, and we do even homeless youth. Oh, really? Yeah, we have a um, right not far from um, Children's Hospital, the Hawthorne Hills Bryan area. We have a transitional housing for um, um, oh, really? 18 okay. to 24 year old. So they stay for up to um, two. So like years. single males are not a huge part of your. Oh yeah. Population oh, yeah. or are oh, they? Absolutely, Glen Hotel, Orion Court, yeah, all That's single right. men. Yes. Okay. Fry okay. Hotel. But we you have a huge population of single men. But you, but you specialize. I mean, you serve these niches that others aren't necessarily serving as well. That's right. We I mean, like the seniors, like families, like youth. Yeah. 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 Some organizations do. Well, Plymouth does no families, right? And they only do serve downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll do a broad geographic area. Right. Right. Yeah, so we have like um, housing in downtown Olympia. We have um, housing for homeless individuals in downtown Olympia. Wow. Yeah. So How about Everett? Um, you got some stuff We in have um, Snohomish County. We have Montlake Terrace, Linwood, um, and um, um, Lake Stevens. I know. Yeah. And then, yeah. The, the, the Kitsap County. Tentacles. We're like working on, we have housing in Bainbridge Island. Oh, <laughs> that's probably a tough land yeah. cost area yeah. to provide housing. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Good for you guys. So we're trying to, we like upscale, upscale neighborhoods. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you live? And you, no. got, and you got Jensen Block and South Lake Union. You got Denny Park and you guys have Lakeview? Yes, or Lakeview, Lakeview. And then we have, um, we have, we just purchased two other sites in South Lake Union. Oh, really? Where? Well, it's really right by half a block from Whole Foods. Um, oh, right. Okay. And Which then site? The, it's, on, it's the um, John Street near John and Terry. So it's, a, so it's north of, of Denny? Um, yeah, north, it, just north so of So John, Denny. it must be by the Denny Park. Yeah, is it, okay. yeah it's not far. Are it's, they, it's so are they it's parking like lots now or something? Or? No, it's, it's a, a building, but it's um, very close to um, um, where the trolley's running oh, right okay. there. Oh, okay. Boy, okay. that's great. So you got there yeah. before it's just, Powell it's Allen. Just, it's just like half a block north of, well, that's what happened when I met with them. They say, how did you get these sites, right? Yeah. And then I, and then it's half a block north of the Cascade Children's Park, the Nebar site. Oh, really? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So right near Lakeview. Yeah. I mean, it's just like... Ca that's yeah, ca yeah. Oh, that's great. I would assume that, yeah, so you're bidding with Paul Allen for... Yeah. That's yeah. great. So God, so South Lake Union's one of your most concentrated will be. Yeah, but, there, but it was really expensive buying yeah. stuff. I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. Right. right. So... I know you have a meeting, so I want to... Well, thanks. I want to let you get to that. Can I stay there for a second? Yeah. Um, so are you getting good in interviews from other people? Yeah, yeah. And we're, you know, I mean, it's Bill uh, Block's coming on to kind of. Um, What's he saying? Are these people saying get rid of transitional housing? Well, Hobson's saying get rid of transitional housing. Well, I see, don't think okay, anyone okay. agrees with okay, him. Okay, see, this is the difference. See, I'm, I'm sorry, we didn't pick this up, this point up, but. What's happening is that in transitional housing, if there are chronically homeless individuals or people with a d disability, where clearly permanent housing is the solution, mm -hmm. transitional housing may not meet their need. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. but if you have okay, here's an example of a family that benefited from transitional housing. Um, we operate the transitional housing at Sandpoint. Mm -hmm. A 20-year-old single mother um, with a nine-month-old child came to Sandpoint Family Housing on TANF. During her 11-month stay, she completed vocational training as a phlebotomist and was completing an ex externship and was continuing her education. She was able to locate permanent housing and moved. She remains in school, is working, and is in permanent housing at follow-up. So if you don't have an ability to have something happen where you're getting employment, you know, you're moving, you're dealing with um, your addiction, you're dealing mm -hmm. with recovery, mm -hmm. then there's no point in being in transition. I mean, you know what I mean? So we developed, we developed um, 1811 for the- Yeah, uh, we're just about ready. She's giving us the cut. Um, maybe we should wait till they turn it off. Okay, that's good. Um, 
One question that came maybe a little bit, maybe there. Yeah. Okay. I can look at it. One question that, are you ready? The Denny Park Apartments kind of shows up more prominently when you slightly closer. Okay, then do slightly closer. Okay, oh yeah, I split the difference. That's okay. Um, and we're ready. Three, two, one. One issue that keeps coming up in this whole debate about ending. Three, two, one. One issue that keeps coming up in this whole issue about ending homelessness is what the role should be of transitional housing. These are units where tenants are allowed only a temporary stay. That's the case with several of the spaces here in this building in South Lake Union. Three, two, one. One issue that keeps coming up in this whole effort to end homelessness is what the role should be of transitional housing. These are units where tenants are allowed only a temporary stay. That's the case with several of the spaces here in this new building in South Lake Union. Try again. Three, two, the color, the color. Uh, yeah. Three. Nope, nope, nope. Do you, you like it when I say three, two, one? Though it helps. I do, yeah. Three, two, one. One issue that keeps coming up in this whole question about ending homelessness is what the role should be of transitional housing. These are units where tenants are allowed only a temporary stay. That's the case with several of the spaces here in this new building here in South Lake Union. You do it one more time. So you ready? Okay. Um, three. Okay. Three, two, one. One issue that keeps coming up in this whole question about ending. Three, two, one. One issue that keeps coming up in this whole effort to end homelessness is what the role should be of transitional housing. These are units where tenants are allowed only a temporary stay. And it's the case with several of the spaces here in this building in South Lake Union.
know. I live right next to them. They're always yelling and screaming at each other. What apartment number is that? What floor is that? Where's the fourth floor? Fourth floor? May and up in December. Okay, so seven, eight months? Seven to eight months, yeah. And then this is permanent? Yes. Okay, so transitional housing, because one thing we're trying to figure out is, is, is what the role is of tra transitional housing. You liked transitional housing? Sarah, can you skip back to school? Yeah. Yeah, yes. I mean, I like to see people get a chance trying to get on with their lives and trying to get it there. It would have been hard to come immediately to here? I don't think so. But at the time, I probably would have been ready to get into anywhere. Okay. Because I had a rough couple years. Yeah, yeah. So Are now. you ready, Sonia? We're ready. Okay. Um, I'll ask you some of these questions again, so don't okay. don't uh, don't be alarmed if I'm asking you the same questions because now we're on tape. But to, but talk about Denny Denny Park Apartments. You like it here? Love it. It's nice and quiet. They're beautiful apartments. You know dishwashers, everything modern, just great. You need, you need something done, it's done right away. And you used to live where? Martin Court. And describe that building. That was like, an, that was a transition, that used to be like an old hotel. And I was there from May 5th of 2005 to December 30th of uh, 2005. And what kind of services did that building offer? The other one? They had to get people started. Well, you had two years to get and get things done and get things on and get on with your life and, and uh, move on with it and everything. And it helped you? Oh, yes. What if you didn't have that transitional housing? I don't know what I would have done. I probably still would have been out, out with my luck down. Now I just now I feel like a new person. I'm getting on with my life and trying to get put close some doors and open up some new ones. And you basically would like to live here for? Oh, I I am. I'm permanent here. So. And at the other place you had to move out. Yes. How long were you given at the other place? Two years. It was a two-year program. And you and you sound like you 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 got that earlier than you expected. Oh yeah, my friend. Uh, went down there to Lehigh and found out about the building and saw it and I saw it and I said where's my application I want to go too. You mean to Martin Court? From Martin Court to Lehigh and then that's when I came over here. Now is Martin Court a Lehigh building? Yes. So you found out about Lehigh through Martin Court, stayed there for seven months and then moved into this Lehigh building here? Uh-huh. And I'm in their permit, in their permit program, and I love it. That's great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're perfect. Thank Do you. you, are you, should we get this gentleman? Sure. Okay, as soon okay. as that car drives away, we're good. Okay, okay. Looks like that's good. <clears throat> okay, are we ready? Yep. Here we go. Uh, so you're, you're, uh, you've lived in this building how long? I lived in here since February, beginning of February. And you like it? I love this building. It's a beautiful building. We've got a great landlord. Uh, it's really quiet. 
and it's got all the newest amenities that anybody could ask for. It's a lovely building. And you must love the location. The lo location, location, location. It's a beautiful location. You're right in the heart of downtown. We got views of the Space Needle in the city down, the downtown skyline. Uh, you can get anywhere around here, practically nothing. It's, it's a perfect location. And where were you before this? I lived in Green Lake. That was also a very nice neighborhood, but this is a much better location and a much better building than I'm living in. And you're looking forward to some, some retail tenants. Oh yes, I'm hoping we can get like a mom and pop coffee shop down in here. We already have like a martial arts studio is going to come the other side, but something that would really help the tenants and help improve our neighborhood. And some of these units I think are transitional units, but you're in a permanent unit. Yes, I'm in a permanent unit and I just love the view. I got a balcony. It's really nice. It was quiet. So you got kind of an ideal world going. Right now I do. Yeah. I do. And I, I'm grateful to Lehigh for you know building this building here and letting me in here. One more thing about the park down there. What's the plan for that as far as you know? The plan, as far as I know, is to plan and develop the playground. And uh, I feel they really need to develop that playground down there. So a lot of people here have small children and there's absolutely no place for these children to safely play because this is a soda and a soap area and there's a lot of bad people cruising around here. And I wouldn't allow my kids if they were underage to play in that park at the current time. So hopefully when they get that play area, will add some activity to it. Right. If they can add some activity, good activity to that park, I think then this, it will transition this neighborhood right along and it will be a much better neighborhood. It will be better for everybody and we can move these bad elements out of here. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much and have a good day, you guys. Appreciate your time. That was great. Thank you, guys. So you guys both watch tomorrow. tomorrow. I, I think, I'm not even sure what you're doing. Get the sign like as we go by. You have to go pretty slow. Okay, here we go. We're going and we're going as slowly as I can without getting people to honk. And here it is. It's got uh, no. here. <laughs>
and most intractable of problems. All sorts of public and private, private programs have been tried, and yet the conditions still exist. But advocates aren't giving up. Indeed, a new effort here in the region has the ambitious goal, some would say overly ambitious, of ending homelessness within the next decade. You ready? You ready? Hold on. Let's switch. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. Homelessness. Yeah, it was a little, yeah. A little too excited. <laughs> you caught yourself. <laughs> Three, two, one. Homelessness, one of society's long-standing and most intractable of problems. All sorts of public and private programs have been tried, and yet the conditions still exist. The conditions still exist. More time. Three, two, what? I'm trying something new. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cute. Three, two, one. Homelessness, one of society's long-standing and most intractable of problems. All sorts of public and private programs have been tried, and yet the condition still exists. But advocates aren't giving up. Indeed, a new effort here in the region has the ambitious goal, some would say overly ambitious, of ending homelessness within the next decade. Let me try it one more time. Yeah. Um, I think I it's think, too slow. Yeah, and the, the words to watch, I think, are exists and decade. Because, it, it, again, it's like decade. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. Homelessness, one of society's long-standing and most intractable of problems. All sorts of public and private programs have been tried, and yet the condition still exists. But advocates aren't giving up. Indeed, a new effort here in the region has the ambitious goal, some would say overly ambitious, of ending homelessness within the next decade. That That's it. Good. Great. Three, two, one. Sharon Lee directs a low-income housing organization. Three, two, one. Sharon Lee directs a low-income housing organization. I like that one. Yep. Okay. Service Continuum, a place to go after someone leaves a shelter such as Union Gospel Mission, but before they're ready for permanent housing. We got some close to T's. Okay. Three, two, one. Transitional housing... Three, two, one. Transitional. Three, two, one. Transitional housing is considered the midpoint in the service continuum, a place to go after someone leaves a shelter, some in gospel mission, but before they're ready for permanent housing. Yeah, that was better. Can, Can I, do I do the, the first, first one again? again? Sure. Three, two, one. Homelessness. One of society's and most intractable of problems. All sorts of private programs have been tried, and yet the conditions still exist. Advocates aren't giving up. Indeed, a new effort here in the region has an ambitious goal, some would say overly ambitious, of homelessness within the decade. Top of the second page. Two, one. This woman experienced just that to live in transitional housing before recently moving to a permanent More plus three two one this experience just that she used to live in transitional housing before re to a permanent apartment that was better. three two one but despite this seeming success story there are those who there are those who say there are those who say that okay three one, but despite this seeming success story, who say that transitional housing is an unnecessary piece, um, they believe people now in shelters should go directly in units. Well, there's close to tease. <clears throat> Three, one, but to Three, two, one, but the seeming success story, there are those who say that transitional housing is an unnecessary piece. Three, two, one, but to Seeming success story, there are those who say that transitional housing is a necessary piece of the continuum. They believe people now in to go directly into permanent units. One, three, two, one. One more time. 
But despite this seeming success story, there are those who additional housing is an unnecessary piece of the continuum. People now in shelters should go directly into permanent. Three, two, one. But despite the seeming success, there are those who say that transitional housing. Two, one. But despite the seeming success story, there are those who say that transitional housing is an unnecessary piece. Of they believe people now in shelters should go directly into. Okay. Three, two, one. Housing policies are being discussed right now by local providers as the ending homeless plan unfolds. One thing everyone agrees on, more resources are needed. Let's do the whole thing one more time. Three, two, one. Other housing policies are being discussed right now by local providers as the ending homeless plan unfolds. One thing agrees on, more resources are needed. Okay, are needed. Yep. Three, two, one. These and other policies are being discussed right now by local providers and funders. These and other housing policies are right now by local providers and funders as the ending homeless. Three, two, one. Housing policies are being discussed right now by local providers as the ending homelessness plan unfolds. One thing ever is on, more resources are needed. Okay.